Hello beloved scholars, welcome back to the Kemet Messiah Academy. Today we're going to be looking at sets, finite sets and infinite sets. This is part of our huge series of videos on sets at the grade 4 and grade 5 level as well as sets at the high school level. So just check the playlist to see which one is relevant to your course of study. Before I go on, let me urge you to subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed, just click that subscribe button right now so that you can make sure you are in the know, you know when the videos come out, click the bell so that you'll be notified. And the more subscriptions we get, the more our videos become accessible to other students the easier they will find the videos in their search we want these videos to go out so that students may benefit I try to break down the topics as much as I can so that you will understand so we want all the students to benefit from these videos so subscribe and share so let's get into the topic for today finite sets infinite sets. Just as a reminder, a set is a collection of items, things, people that share at least one trait in common. Now, how do we know if a set is finite or if it is infinite? Now, the definition of a finite or an infinite set follows very closely to the definition of the words finite and infinite as used in the general English language. So um, I'm always telling you the terms that are used in math as well as other subjects are very closely related most times to how the words are used in the general language. So always have your dictionary close at hand when you are working not just in language but in all other topics. Now, if we look for the word finite, we will get a variety of definitions, but basically it means it has an end, a beginning and an end, or you are able to count all the members. Right? So when something is finite, it starts and it ends. There is a particular period of time that it exists. When something is infinite, it has no beginning, no end, and that's where the word infinity comes from which my students just love to use. Children in general seem to be fascinated by this word, infinity, right? So infinity means having no beginning, no end. And that's how we use the term in maths as well. As it relates to sets, an infinite set either has no beginning or no end, or neither a beginning nor an end. You are not able to list or to reasonably count all the elements of that set. So then, let us look at some examples of finite sets and infinite sets. So, a finite set has a beginning and an end. The cardinal number or the counting number is used to represent the elements of the set because since we can count the elements of a finite set, we say that the set has cardinality. We are able to assign a number to the set and say these are the number of elements in that set. Even if there are no elements in the set, the cardinality is zero. We're still able to say, to assign a number to it, right? So even though zero is not a counting number, but in this case, zero can be considered as having a cardinality. Now, this, the elements of the finite set can be counted one, two, three, four. Even if it's fairly big, a fairly huge number of things, it can reasonably be counted. It's just that it would take a little longer time. But it can, it's possible 
to count all the elements or to name all the elements. So for example, set A has A, E, I, O, U. Now we know these are the vowels of the English alphabet. Five vowels, the cardinality is five. It's a very finite, very much a finite set. As we said, if set C is the null set, the empty set, it has no members, we still assign a cardinality to it. This is just another way of saying the number of elements in set P is zero. That's finite. If we can say the number of elements in set A is six, this is another way of writing the set as as um, in terms of the number, and here represents number, the number or cardinality of the elements in set A is 6. If we are able to list the sets, but we don't necessarily want to list all the members, but we could, because here it has a beginning, so the numbers from 2 to 9 we just choose not to list the ones that come in between, but we put these three dots, ellipses, to represent the fact that some numbers are missing. But the set has a beginning and it has an end. So we could still find the cardinality of it if we chose to list the numbers. Here's another way of writing. We could say, X is the set of numbers from that are greater than 6 and less than 25. The numbers that are greater than 6, less than 25, we definitely can list those numbers that are more than 6, less than 25. Alright, so these are examples of ways that we can write finite sets. An infinite set cannot be counted, cannot be listed, it, has, it either has no beginning or no end or neither a beginning nor an end. So for example, it can have an end but if it has no beginning and again we use our ellipses, the three dots, to indicate this goes on and on in this direction, we get into negative numbers eventually on and on to negative infinity or it has a beginning but it will be drifting to neg to positive infinity no end in that direction or it begins with negative infinity and continues to positive infinity right so these are infinite sets they cannot be reasonably named or counted the set of stars in the universe, the set of grains of sand on the on the, the seashore, right? We cannot reasonably count these things. So now we're going to look at these examples and we're going to say if these sets are finite or infinite. Set B has numbers 10, 20, 30 three elements and there's no indication in either direction that the set continues. So it definitely has a first element and a last element. It has a cardinality of three. This is definitely a finite set. Set X, days of the week. We could also list them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There are seven days in the week. It has a cardinality of seven. We absolutely can name them, list them. So this is a finite set. Set D is a set of odd numbers. No, the first odd number is one. So that set definitely has a beginning. However, odd numbers keep going up by two. So from the first odd number, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and on and on and on. In that, part, in that direction, towards infinity, because we can always keep adding two more. 
So the set of odd numbers, as with the set of even numbers, composite numbers, prime numbers, they go on and on and on. So that's an infinite set. Even though there is a beginning for odd numbers. One is the first odd number or the odd whole number. Now, set C, the ellipses indicate that it does not have a beginning even though it ends. So we know this is infinite. For set R, the converse, it has a beginning but no end. Also infinite. Here now we have X. X represents an, any element in that set. X is an element of the natural numbers or counting numbers where X minus 5 would be greater than 6. So there are an infinite number of numbers that we can put here and subtract 5 from it and the answer will be greater than 6. Right? Many, many numbers. We can take 5 from it and the answer will be greater than 6. So this also is infinite. X is an element of the set of real numbers. Remember, real numbers include the whole numbers, the natural numbers, the fractions, etc. Where x is greater than 0 and less than 1. Now remember, this is usually, this is a less than sign, but when we're reading it from the middle, as we should when it is written in this format, from the middle, x is greater than 0, or 0 is less than x, right? And less than 1. What are the real numbers that fall between 0 and 1? That represents the fractions, the common fractions, and they are vast, they are endless. So the, the real numbers that are greater than 0 and less than 1, that's infinite. Alright, so x is an integer. It's an element of the set of integers. Remember, we have positive integers, negative integers, 0, less than 6. So 6 is where the set terminates, but less than 6 indicates it doesn't have a beginning because the negative numbers go on to infinity. So this is also infinite. X is an element of the natural numbers. Natural numbers are counting numbers. The first natural number is 1. So the natural numbers that are less than 20, the natural numbers that are less than 20 would be just from 1 to 19. So it, it would have a cardinality of 19. So that is definitely a finite set. And S represents the number of shoes in Jamaica. Now, even though there are millions of shoes in Jamaica, we still could count them. We could count, we just, it would take us a little while, but we could reasonably count them, we could ask everybody within a region to count their shoes and send in their numbers and we tally them together. There's a way we could do that. So this is definitely a finite set. All right. So just remember the definition of finite and infinite as used in the general language. Finite has a beginning and an end. You can list the members, you can count the members. Infinite either has no beginning but an end, no end but a beginning, or neither a beginning nor an end. And usually we will use the ellipses, these three dots, to indicate in whichever direction where the set goes on and on and on and on and on. Alright, so we're at the end of this video and now is the time for me to remind you, if you have not yet done so, to subscribe and to share this video so that other students may benefit just like you did. Drop a line in the comments if there are any topics you'd like me to cover. If you don't see it in the playlist, I will gladly, absolutely, surely do it for you. My scholars, I'll see you in the next video.